Oh, Shakta. Good morning, Holy Spirit. <laughs> welcome. We welcome you into everything of our lives. It's your life, God. It's, uh, have your way. <clears throat> Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I swear there's no kicking against the pricks. There's no bucking. Everyone is perfectly yielded and gladly enjoys letting you flow through their very being in heaven. Let that be here on earth today as we just yield another layer of everything we have to you, God. Shabbat. I want to make a, a video about sowing and reaping. Sowing, not what we've been taught probably in church, but uh, God gives us seed, right? He doesn't give us just uh, natural things. He gives us spiritual things. So, sowing righteousness, sowing mercy, sowing faith, sowing the spirit. <laughs> you know, you sow your revelation, what God's given to you, and it multiplies. I ran into my friend the other day at uh, a store. And uh, he was he was totally all lit up about how his son he sold a TV and uh, he reaped a bigger TV. <laughs> and in, my, in my mind, like that's cool. Yeah, that's uh, natural. You sow something in the natural and you reap something in the natural. But like, like let's step it up a little. Let's like sow some righteousness and reap more righteousness. You know, there's no cap to the uh, righteousness of God. Of his kingdom and peace, there is no end. You know, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. So you sow Jesus in the people and you see Jesus manifesting through people. You sow the revelation that God's revealed to you, you know, your measure of Christ into other people. And that measure of Christ will manifest through those people if their gates are clean, you know. So, you know, some water, some sow seeds, and but God gives the increase, right? It's always up to God to give the increase to those who are open for his living waters to water the earth garden inside them, in earth as it is in heaven. The earth is like a garden. <clears throat> you know, there's the plantings of the Lord down here and all over the Shabbat. Blood of Jesus somewhere. So we just moved um, in my new pad right now and just experimenting with uh, trying to find a place to record where I can, you know, just revelate and lay on the carpet for hours if it need be. <laughs> I need a place where I can, if uh, something really powerful happens, I can just lay down. <laughs> so this seems to be a good spot right now. I might give you a tour later on of the house. I don't know yet. It's just a basement suite. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, Shaka. God gave his best seed when he sowed Jesus Christ. You know, he put him in the ground, and that seed died and brought forth many sons into glory. Hallelujah. So, what are you sowing? Like, it's just, just, it's just a little quick checkup for both of us, you know, me and you. Like, what are we sowing? Like, are we sowing into the natural? Or are we sowing into the flesh? If we sow to the flesh, we will reap destruction. If we sow to the spirit, we'll reap everlasting peace and life, you know? So uh, it's a good check every day to see what you're sowing. What are you throwing onto the waters? <laughs> are you polluting the waters? <laughs> uh, yeah. Shabbat. You know, let's just have a drink break. I don't know. I need to go get my Bible. Hello. Shabbat. Shikari. Uh, I got these two here. These are my little travel Bibles. I don't travel, but if I did, I would take these with me. This is the little small KGV pocket Bible, and this was uh, an NIV. I got some really cool Revy in here. Look at that. Falling apart. They say that a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to somebody with a poverty spirit. <laughs> Anyways, check this out. No, I'm not. <laughs> Praise God. Adam means mad, Seth means appointed, Enosh means mortal, 
Kinyan means sorrow. Mahelaliao means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. And Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And Noah means rest or comfort or also new beginnings. Some uh, pastor showed me this years ago. I was just blown away. It's like Jesus is hidden within the geneal genealogies of the first uh, generations. Where is it? Man appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the despairing rest or comfort. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> Yeah, they did uh, some kind of word search and they came up with that. I just took their word on it. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> it's uh, You can go search it out yourselves and see if it, that's what the Bible says, but I don't know. I find that unbelief is just like a snare to me, so I try to stay away from it. Hallelujah. Listen, Christ is in His body manifesting who God is anyway. You know how... We're living stones reflecting the cornerstone, so it's like it's biblical. We're living stones built up into Him in a spiritual house, reflecting God, what God is like. You know, we're His, we're the body of Christ, and Christ is spirit. Christ is like, you know, we're the bride, we're one with our lover, we're one with our husband, you know. So, uh we just need to sow some more spiritual righteousness, sow some more, not dead works, that's what religious people do. Living works is where the Father does the work. He's the living, you know. <laughs> what did Jesus say about that? Uh, uh, about that Peter being the rock? Oh, my mind's a little bit foggy right now. I'm a little bit sore from moving all these boxes for two days straight and unpacking and hallelujah. Jesus said that he's the living God. <laughs> Hell yeah. Whatever. Blood of Jesus on you. Uh, if you guys are receiving like uh, anything from God, like even a word for me, if you have a word for me, just type it on the YouTube thing or on Facebook. Re I take rebukes. <laughs> I like rebukes, man. When it's from the Lord because it feels good. The Spirit of God is on it, like, oh, it's correction. And it just knocks the flesh off of you, like, oh, wow, that's darkness? Okay, let's get rid of that. And it exposes light. Everything that comes into the light is made manifest for what it is, you know? So you bring all your works into the light. Let's bring everything that we do into the light to see if it's uh, of God or just of man, <laughs> apart from God, you know? And, uh,. And then it's good to see whatever remains, like God, just let your fire come and burn up everything that's not of you and everything that is of you, water it, <laughs> let it grow forth and bring forth like more, <laughs> you know, sowing the seeds and the talents. In the Bible, you know, one guy had one talent, he got, you know, a city and the other guy had like three talents and then the one guy, he buried his talents, he buried it, he hid it. And he didn't, so he didn't sow nothing. And then he was like considered like wicked. <laughs> because why would, why did he say he had a fearful spirit? Uh, you know, what would the master think? And I don't know. I think whatever God give, like we all have the testimony of Jesus, right? I mean, that's the most basic thing. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Like you got saved, Jesus saved you, right? Or else you probably wouldn't even be watching these videos unless you're just curious, wondering what, what, what's this all about. Well, if you've been saved, you have the testimony of Jesus, how he saved you. You can share that talent. That's a talent. That's like, that's, that's gold. People need to hear that. My God, like you've received the most precious, awesome gifts available in all of existence. God. <laughs> You know, no better testimony than that. You received God. And uh, you can share Him with how you received Him and what happened. Like, just like that fire went through your entire being. Glory, even if it wasn't like dramatic like that, you could just share like what, like what you know, God's done in your life. That's like a talent. 
for me, it's like uh, sometimes I worship God and the presence comes and I, I go into visions and revelations and I read the Bible and the scripture explodes and I talk to with, talk amongst my friends and we just revelate and just like the scriptures unravel and reveal who Jesus is like and just stuff like that. And I just later on I press record and just share what, what we've seen and heard. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a lot of glory on that. Hallelujah. Like, thank you, Lord Jesus. So just sow righteousness and burn up everything that doesn't produce righteousness, doesn't produce a spiritual walk with God, because God is spirit. You know, when you worship Him, you worship Him in the spirit, not in the flesh, right? When you talk with Him, you talk with Him in the spirit, because His words are spirit and they are life. So you're just like, it's like, if you don't know what that, just basically heart to heart. And then revelation knowledge will come and you'll just you realize like oh wow God doesn't really speak English that much <laughs> he speaks vision <laughs> he speaks dreams he speaks impressions he speaks like with my English he speaks with an audible voice he speaks with power <laughs> he speaks through nature you just hear the spirit with the spirit of God is saying and you learn his language by spending time with him it's like instant immersion, you know? <laughs> you get immersed in the presence of God and learn by His Spirit what, it, what His Spirit is saying. And then it's real easy when someone, like a Pharisee, comes along and tries to say, Thus saith God unto thee, blah, 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 and try to throw you in bondage. And you're just like, No, <laughs> that's not God. That's just you, dude. You're trying. <laughs> You're, in the, you're sowing the flesh and trying to make it look like spirit. We need to sow the spirit to just burn up all the flesh and expose their works of darkness and what they think they know. Yeah. You just need to hang out with the Holy Ghost a little bit longer, bro, and you'll probably get some good revelation to share. The real thus saith the Lord. You know, you don't even have to say thus saith the Lord. The mind of Christ is always speaking His mind, you know? People want to give them a piece of your mind. Once you give them a piece of the mind of Christ, it's, there's peace in the peace of the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, I've had this thing for ages. I used to go on the buses. Like, I got stuff highlighted and stuff, and pages and the covers falling off. I used to go on the bus, and these demons would just manifest on me. Uh, I was a baby Christian back then and still just a toddler <laughs> but back then I would have I decided like I had this fear of men so I had this thing I'd put it in my back pocket and hide it and then I'd sit in the back and I'd just kind of read it and, and then it fell apart so I put duct tape on it to hold it together and it did its job but then demons would still start manifesting on me like they would appear Two stops before the bus even came to pick me up to go to like church or wherever I was going, and um, and then the things they would laugh at me. I didn't know how to cast out devils, and I learned through just being out there on the street. Like I learned how to cast out devils, and the the greatest key I could ever give you to casting out a devil is listening for the voice of God. It's the anointing that casts out devils. It's the spirit. And it's the, the volume of your voice. <laughs> I screamed at a devil for two hours. And then it finally came out as we were just laying hands on the, this, this girl's stomach and uh, spit was all over her face. And I realized that my aggression did nothing. I realized I needed the anointing. I needed to be soaked in the manifest presence of God and the demons see that and they shriek and they freak <laughs> and then they they hit they they just they're like dogs you can scare them you just go like, like just clap your hands and they'll flee you know but uh yeah so I had this pocket Bible that I then I was I went on the other extreme I took the biggest Bible I could find and carry that on the bus you know, like, if the devils are going to manifest, bring it on. I'll bring my big, I had one of those big, uh, I don't know, someone bought me this huge bottle. It's like freaking, like this thick. It's like a hard cover. My sister bought me that. It was like for my birthday. I took that thing on the bus, man. Nothing. The demons were silent. <laughs> Probably because they were, I don't know, maybe they're just, uh, they were like, yeah, let's let him, 
let's let him soak in that pride for a while, thinking that his the bigger the Bible, the more terrible he is. Yeah. No, it's it's all about spirit. It's all about living in the Holy Ghost. In Him we move, we live, and we have our being. And then when we're as we're in light, all the forms of darkness around us, they will manifest. If listen, man, if demons aren't manifesting around you, like I mean, like just gnashing at you, wanting to destroy you, and even speaking through humans, check yourselves. <laughs> They manifested on Jesus, they manifested on Paul, they manifested on people in the Bible. Why aren't they manifesting on you? Maybe you need to up your spirituality, sowing righteousness, sowing the anointing. Because the anointing breaks the yoke and when the, anoint when the yoke is broken, that thing leaves and it tries to find somewhere else to go. So, uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good check to like, oh, how come there's no demons manifesting on me? <laughs> Where's the manifest presence of God? Like, I want to live and move and have my being in this anointing more and more daily. And, uh, yeah. I remember, like, just a lot of bus rides. If you want to get you... <laughs> you want to see some demons, just worship God for hours and then just go hop on a public transit bus. Guaranteed you'll run into a few devils. <laughs> and take a little pocket Bible with you and just crack it open on the bus. Man, demons will manifest over anything. I've seen them just, just like a little cross. Like wearing a necklace and they... Man, it's just jewelry, man. It has nothing to... <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. My friend, uh, he was my supervisor at work, and his name was Antonio. And uh, man, you run into a lot of weird religious things. This guy is—he was a brand new believer, and uh, I just—I just showed him all this heaven and hell stuff. I found this website, uh, Divine Revelations of Jesus Christ, or something like that. There's all these heaven and hell encounters, and I went through it. I was devouring that stuff. I love that stuff, man. Because I feel the impartation, I can get whacked by it, and you know this testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. If these people can go to heaven I, and see heaven, I can go to heaven and see heaven too. God's no respecter of persons. I don't really want to go to hell and experience that, but I've seen that a few times <laughs> through like dreams and just you just don't want to go there. It's it's gross. It's the word. It's beyond like you. Know, I don't even like talking about it, but. Uh, Anyways, Antonio, he comes to work and he looks at me because I, I put on my green shirt. I bought it for like five dollars at this uh, store. It was on sale in the back bin in the way in the back, and it had a picture of Jesus, uh, Christos or something. I don't know how they say it in Spanish, but it was in it was a Spanish shirt. And this guy was Spanish, and he came up to me and he stared at my shirt and he walked like slowly over to me and. Uh, <laughs> And he's like, thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you, brother. I'm like, what's up? It's like, I was praying to God. I was so confused. <laughs> Listen, God will use you in ways you don't even know, just by just, by just loving him. <laughs> and then he's like, I was so confused. Someone in my church came up to me and said, I cannot wear Jesus on my, on my shirt <laughs> because... Uh, it's, it's idolatry and I'm in idolatry and I'm so confused. I'm like, God help me. I don't want to be in idolatry. And, and you know, I'm trying try to speak, speak in the Spanish accent. I can't do it. And I saw your shirt today and that's just a confirmation. It's okay. Because I, I gave him this thing, right? I was walking a little bit of sauce and he, he kind of like, he was feeding off of my testimony. And I gave him these heaven and hell testimonies too. I love testimonies, man. Hallelujah. Oh, it's encouraging. And then, uh, and I'm like, dude, that's a religious demon. Like, this is not G. I'm wearing a Christian shirt at what? Colossians 23 or 323. I don't even know what that means. Ever do everything unto the Lord? Something like that. And, uh, whatever. It doesn't mean anything. It's not the outward man, it's the inward man that produces righteousness. You can wear all the Christian jewelry bling all you want, it's not going to produce nothing. What are you gonna put on a show and put on a costume like the Catholics have to have to wear their costumes to be holy? 
why it's not the outward <laughs> it's the inward parts it's not what goes uh, into the man but out of the man that whatever Sheva yeah you know unless you're John the Baptist then you gotta wear a camel skin <laughs> that didn't make him righteous though <sighs> it was his relationship with God it was his surrender to God it's your surrender to God He's your righteousness. It's not your outward actions. Yeah. But you can sow what He's sowed into you. And other people will uh, see your good works. Those are good works. It's sowing righteousness. And then they will glorify your Father in Heaven. Just by manifesting the exact same things. Like, remember Jesus at the, at the baptism? He's like, glorify your name, uh, Father. Jesus said. And the Father said, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. And then Jesus said, he didn't say that for my sake to all the people. He said that basically he's going to glorify his name again through you. He glorified his name through Jesus because Jesus manifested the names of God throughout the Old Testament. He manifested those natures because the name is its nature. He manifested all those natures to all the people to show uh Basically, what God is like, He who has seen the Son has seen the Father. So that we can manifest those same natures and names that we can also say, whoever has seen us has seen the Son. <laughs> you know, it's no longer me living, but Christ living in me. <laughs> you know, so when you manifest the natures of God, you're doing, basically, you're glorifying the Father again. I have both glorified it. <laughs> And will glorify it again. He glorified his name through Jesus, and he's going to glorify his name through the body of Christ as well. And his name is his nature, so you're going to manifest what Christ is like, what God is like, by revelating, by sowing righteousness, sowing spirit, sowing life. The first Adam was a blah, blah, blah. I can't remember that, I have to look it up. But the second Adam is a life-giving spirit. The second Adam is a life-giving spirit. He gives life. In his words are life. In his actions are life. In his prayers are life. In his worship is life. Everything he does, he's sowing life to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. So I would encourage you to start sowing righteousness. <laughs> Start sowing your testimony. Listen, you don't have to go up to people and tell them. You can. But just follow the Spirit. Wherever, this is the greatest key I've ever learned. Wherever the anointing is manifesting strongly, stay there as long as you can. I was in, I moved into my new house just yesterday. Uh, there was this one section in the house. This is really strange to me. Actually, even before I left my old place, there was I would go into my room and there was like a portal realm of glory in there. And I'd go into the kitchen and it would kind of lift off of me. I'd go back into the room and there's a portal room of like of glory. And then I'd go back in the kitchen and it'd lift off of me. I'm like, God, this is really strange. And I said to my wife, come in here. There's a there's a realm of glory in the room. <laughs> and then uh it was where she could feel it outside there. I couldn't. I could only feel it when I go inside my room. It was really strange to me. And we moved into this new place just last night. And on the staircase, there's a staircase that uh, goes upstairs, but there's a locked door where you can't go to the next neighbors, whatever. I could feel like there's nobody up there. There's nobody lives there yet. It's like uh, it's vacant. And I would feel this this realm of the anointing. And then I would go into the room, step about 10 steps like into my room, away from the staircase, and it's nothing. Then I go back into the staircase and feel this realm of, of the anointing. As I told my wife, I said, I feel the anointing on the staircase. So I was standing there for a while just soaking up the anointing last night. That's funny. I was going to make a video there, but it was kind of like, uh, there's boxes everywhere. Uh, well, in my room right now, anyways. So... That reminds me of like, of Jake who shut up. Hallelujah, man. Shaka de Korobo Shoka. Have a sip of the river of life. Just grab your Bible and just like, take it. 
those spirit words just filling your entire being. Take a cup, dip it into the river of life, and just drink by faith. Ho, oh, if anyone's thirsty, let them come to the rivers and drink. If you're thirsty. If you're not, don't worry about it. I'm thirsty. Oh, I don't care what I look like. I used to drive my car with my, wa my mouth wide open. And I'm like, I'm thinking, all these people are looking at me. What? <laughs> they might pull me over and think I'm like, there's something wrong with me. Do you need to, uh, you know, medical attention? <laughs> but I'm like, no, I don't care. I feel the, I feel the anointing. <laughs> and uh, he's like, man, you're not of this world, are you? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyways. Reminds me of Jacob's uh, rock there where he laid his head down, laid his head on the rock, you know, resting on the rock. He's like, surely the Lord is in this place. I did not know it. It's actually geographical locations where the manifest presence of God abides. It's really strange to me. This is kind of new. I always thought it was just the kingdom of God within you, but there's actually the kingdom of heaven around you as well, where there's like these realms that just kind of open up. And, uh, Oh, I remember years ago. Whoa. I came home from uh, work. I was tired, man. I drove my bicycle for like an hour because uh, I was experimenting with exercise. <laughs> and I drove my bike home. And uh, it took him about an hour. Sometimes it was in the rain. Sometimes in the, the scorching heat. And I get home. And I just stop. And because uh, the presence of God just boom. Just, just this one spot, about maybe like five square feet around. I think there was an angel standing there or something. I didn't have any, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I just felt it. And uh, I was like, whoa, I'm just standing there. Just my eyes closed and just receiving this presence. And then my mom, uh, she's like, Chris, <laughs> supper's ready, come in. And I was like, okay. And I'm just laying, I'm standing up in this, this portal. And I could step out of it, and I could step back into the presence. It was, it was really neat, and it was a like a, a physical, uh, geographical location where I could just step into this portal in the manifest presence of God. I don't know how that works. Usually, it's just I talk about spiritual things, and that that spiritual realm would open up around me, and it would go wherever I'm going. If I'm on a train, it goes with me on the train, you know. But this this was new. And uh, I haven't really paid much attention to it. I have to, I have to like, dig it up on the scriptures and search it out later so I can uh, learn more about this and learn how to open it up wider, <laughs> cover my city in the, just the manifest presence of God in <laughs> this, this, these heavenly portals. It was like, oh yeah, the scriptures are coming to my mind right now. There was a healing pool at Bethesda where uh, this angel would come down and stir up the waters and whoever would go into the pool would get healed. That was uh, an, a place where an angel would come down and people would, you know, they would get healed. Whoever was the first one into the waters would get healed. So this is not something I'm just making up. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I may appear crazy to other people, but to you, this should be normal. <laughs> you know, it's in the Bible. I'm sure there's many other places where uh, this stuff happens. Uh, I know that you can carry an open heaven or you can step into an open heaven or you can step into an open heaven through someone else that they've opened up. You know, like Samuel in the Old Testament, he was prophesying and then uh, Saul came into that atmosphere, threw off his clothes and then he started prophesying too. He had a, he had a prophetic open heavens of uh, the prophetic realm where anyone could just step in and they step into that grace. So whatever you're walking in, you step into, uh, say, Maybe you have a prophetic gift and like it's like a mantle on you and you can just like bring people into that realm and that anointing and they'll, they'll, that, there's a grace to prophesy there. There's a place to grow. That's what the school of prophets was. It's like it's an atmosphere where you can come in and learn from because uh, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So it's spiritual. It's a spiritual atmosphere. It's not just intellectual how to prophesy. Like reading a dictionary, a picture dictionary won't really help you if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who searches the deep things of God and reveals it to us, you know? So, uh, 
If you want to learn how to prophesy, search the deep things of God through the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spend time. Whenever you feel manifest, stop. I mean, I was, I was sitting on the stairway yesterday, soaking it up. <laughs> I was standing in my backyard before my mom called me for supper, soaking it up. Those people wanted to get into the pool of Bethesda so they can be healed. <laughs> you know, I just, I love the presence of God. Man, what else is there in this life? Not much. The world has nothing to offer once you've tasted and seen how good God is. You just want everyone else to taste Him and see Him too. <laughs> Step into that and then you start sowing that. Sowing what you've seen and heard and experienced in heaven or with God <laughs> on the earth in a heavenly place in Christ. And sow that so that it's on earth as it is in heaven because that's what it's going to be like as everyone's going to be just manifesting what they've tasted, seen, and heard, and experienced with the Father. And it'll be just like rivers of living waters flooding through the entire earth realm, manifesting, you know, <laughs> heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. Glory to God. Everyone will want to do the will of God because it's, there's, there's just so much peace and life and awesome. Or else you'll just, if you don't want to do the will of God, you just want to do your own thing and live in darkness, then you'll just have to flee to another city where... If there's there's darkness, you know the goat cities and the sheep cities that's written about in the in the gospels. So choose this day who you're going to serve. Our God is spirit. You know if you want to worship Him, worship Him in spirit and truth. Get to know the Holy Spirit. You know, and He will teach you. Truth. Your discernment is measured by the amount that you know Holy Spirit's voice. And it's not your intellectual. What you think discernment is, it's spiritually discerned. Discerning of spirits is like you can discern what spirit is what spirit. It's not because someone pulls out a chart and shows you, okay, this is this and this is this. That's knowledge of good and evil. Tree of life is just pure experience right on the field. Like, okay, that's a familiar spirit because like that thing does this and that's a spirit of lust because I feel like looking at this thing and lusting. That's a spirit of rage because I just feel really angry right now. And it's not me. Because there's no reason for me to be angry right now. These things all come with experience and it's basic ABCs, one, two, threes of like how to discern things. You, you spend time with the Holy Spirit, those things will manifest on you. And if they're not manifesting on you, you need to spend more time with the Holy Spirit. Because not only they will manifest on you, you will manifest God through your gates. And you'll see how much of a rescuer He is. I told this testimony before. I was standing in the, tree, the street church with my guitar. And uh, I didn't feel any anointing. But God told me to go to these places and worship Him and leap, you know, preach. God sent me there with a sword. And that, and that angels would... Like I had a multitude of angels around me that would back up everything that that sword would, would hit. <laughs> Basically the word of God. And uh, Shabbat, 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 <laughs> have a drink, hallelujah. And so I'm in, I'm obeying the Lord, I'm out on the mission field in the churches. <laughs> I'm on the mission field in the churches, hallelujah. And uh... This is, I didn't feel nothing, but I'm obedient to the vision. I obeyed the Lord and I went and I've been going like, and then all of a sudden on the corner of my eye, I don't feel any anointing. I'm frustrated because there's no anointing on the worship and I'm just like, that frustrates me because I was the one who was supposed to be leading it. I'm always looking for that open heaven just so you can, you know, God can just hammer people and get them hammered in the Holy Ghost. And this demon possessed guy comes just like right towards me and I know he's gonna hurt me and then as soon as he's like about one to two feet away from my face boom, this realm of glory just drops in his eye I look at his eyes go wide and he just runs away and I yell at him stop he's like you have the power man I said no I don't <laughs> you that's the angel of the Lord, or that's Jesus I can't remember what I said uh, Showing you that he's real, and I told him to come back, and then I, I led him to Jesus, and then we uh, we ate together. It was it was great, but that just tells me that the protection of the Lord comes when you obey the vision. 
Like when you're obeying the vision, you have automatic provision. Like he supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. <laughs> like this glory, boom, this realm just opened up. It was dry, but he protected me. You couldn't let anything. It was like Jesus when those people went to go throw him off the cliff. And then uh, like his first day of ministry, they're, they're trying to kill him and shut him down. And uh, he, the Bible says he just passed right through them. It's like they made a path for him to pass through. And they're like, oh. No, he passed right through them. <laughs> like, you know, he could walk through walls. <laughs> he could walk through people. He, had a, he walked in a realm of glory that the natural realm had no authority to overpower. He could walk on water, walk through walls, walk through people, levitate into heaven. Perfectly normal if you're, you know, the book of Acts. He can disappear, you know, after breaking a bread. and <laughs> He wants to be pursued in spirit. You know, Jesus, he walked in high realms of glory. <laughs> I'm just the toddler level of glory. Like, I just, I feel it. I just, I'm standing on the stairways, just, whoa. You know, <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> uh, I'm not ashamed where I'm. I want to grow faster too. I want to like get into the high realms of glory where I can walk through people and demon possess people. But God, this is just where I'm at right now. He'll just boom, land down there and just. Poosh, Hello! <laughs> and scare the hell out of people so that they can get heaven into them, you know? Well, hallelujah. That's the truth anyway. Oh, shut up. Sowing righteousness. You know, you can sow to your own spirit. If you have the gift of tongues, just put your hand on your belly and just pray. And just experience the manifest presence of God. And if you're having trouble experiencing that, just keep pressing through. Break through. Break through. You're, you're going to hear yourself. Oh, I'm going to go get a drink of water. Oh, i got to go check Facebook. Oh, i got to go to the bathroom. Hold on. Go to the bathroom. But just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> go to the washroom, <laughs> sit on the throne, just shakara karama shokore. You know, just keep on pressing through. You're building up your your spirit man. You're being strengthened strengthened with might in your inner man. As the Holy Spirit, just you're praying in the spirit, releasing mysteries into the atmosphere for others to experience in the spirit. Hallelujah! You speak it out loud, audibly. The sound waves will carry it, <laughs> you know, in the spirit realm, we'll, we'll, we'll feel it. Read the Bible out loud. These are tips that uh, I learned through uh, Red Letter Ministries. He said he reads the Bible out loud, and I, I, I tested it. I, I would read my Bible out loud, the Passion Translation, and whoa, I couldn't believe the difference, the atmosphere, the presence of God. And it kind of makes sense because there's a blessing in the book of Revelation that says if you, uh, blessed is he who reads aloud the words of this prophecy or something like that, you know? Speaking it out loud. And even Nehemiah and all that in the Old Testament, they would they'd preach the word of God, like read it out loud into the atmosphere with the mind of Christ for understanding and interpretation as you read it out loud. It's like your, your spirit and not your body is coming into alignment and, uh, and your soul will get it, <laughs> you know? The spirit of the words, because this this, these words were written by the Holy Ghost. They were penned by men through the Holy Spirit, telling them what to write. And then so you just tap into the Holy Spirit who wrote these words, you speak them out loud with your body, and your soul gets renewed by the spirit that's going through your soul and out your body, <laughs> you know? So you, you, you're getting in alignment with body, soul, and spirit. And it's pretty cool. It feels good. <laughs> so read the Bible out loud. You're sowing righteousness. Uh, what else? Uh, Shabbat. Praying for people to be healed. It's not really what you pray. It's just releasing the anointing on them. It's the substance. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. You know? So... Get into the anointing. Let the anointing just drip through you. Let the anointing come through your words. Let the anointing come through your hands as you lay hands on the sick. Just it's you're always focusing on the Spirit of God. Trust and dependence on the Holy Ghost. Uh, 
Yeah, there's so, like, all these other ministries. I, I listen to everybody, man. I like David Hogan. Uh, I listen to Paul Keith Davis, um, Bob Jones. Uh, I like Todd Bentley. Like, <laughs> I went to his conference, uh, Todd Bentley, and man, the realms of glory that fill the atmosphere. I don't care if you get offended by who I listen to. <clears throat> I only listen to the Holy Ghost in those people. And if it's just flesh, I'll just like <clears throat> shelve it or burn it. It's worthless to me. But I went to a Todd Bentley conference. <laughs> And my wife got drunk in the spirit for three days and just revelation after revelation after re over three days straight we were just like revelating sitting in the sauce and we lived with a Pharisee <laughs> this guy was so religious uh, he, he he's died <laughs> he died I don't know I hopefully he went to be with the Lord I don't know but he was I guess he didn't have a grid for uh, certain things and I don't know I hope he's with the Lord Jesus Christ I don't know he was an old guy he just died of old age uh, but uh, we only lived there for a year we moved out in about about uh, half a year after we moved out he died and uh, yeah so opening up realms of glory uh, who else do I listen to these are just some of the people who can help disciple you like man if you want to experience I, I love like just weird random things like uh, there's this website called uh, Divine Revelations of Jesus Christ if you google it they have all these heaven and hell testimonies like like Rick Joyner um, uh, you know there's 23 minutes in hell guy I don't know I mean, Baxter lady I don't, even, I don't remember their names like I just listen to them and if there's glory on something I'll sit there and I'll, I'll just suck that up with a straw Sometimes I'm even going through something and I'll put on one of my old videos, my old videos where I knew the glory was manifesting strong and I'll just like, it clears the atmosphere. My wife has experienced this. She's like, Chris, put on one of your videos. <laughs> the atmosphere is a little hard today. So we just put on a video and we'll go to sleep and go to sleep in peace. Hallelujah. Listen, it's not who you listen to. It is, but it isn't. It's the Holy Spirit. You want to hear his words, whoever's speaking. It doesn't matter. There's tons of teachers, but you only have one teacher. It's the Holy Ghost. He's the one who teaches you, brings you from glory to glory, deeper righteousness, into more of Christ, more of Christ likeness. Because we can sit there and listen to someone revelating for hours and nothing would change unless the Holy Spirit changes us. And we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because Jesus stood before Pharisees and they didn't change. You know? The disciples changed, <laughs> but it was gradual, man. Hallelujah. So God, we just ask for acceleration right now. In Jesus' name, that you would accelerate everyone who's who's listening for your voice. So that you can sow, that they can sow righteousness. They can sow your voice. Whatever you're doing in earth, God. We want to manifest that. We want to manifest spiritual realities into the earth. In Jesus' name, for other people to taste and see that God is good. Thank you for the testimony of Jesus being spread abroad so that that testimony of Jesus can multiply. Those talents can multiply. And then we can have authority over cities. Hallelujah. Just releasing glory waves after glory wave through the city, through our spirit life, through your spirit as we, you sit on your throne and we overcome and sit with you in your, <laughs> sit with you in your throne and just manifest your spirit everywhere we go. I have a testimony about that where uh, like Jesus talked, uh, showed me Revelation at the end of chapter 3 there. He's like, uh, whatever, it's, it's uh, something where I, I had a dramatic encounter with the Father. And uh, it was weird. I did not feel like an overcomer. But he sat, I sat with my Father in his throne and he showed me the earth in a situation where... He rebuked me in love. There was a manifest spirit of love of my father going right through me, but he didn't look at me. He was staring at the people who were persecuting me and just pouring love into them. Not persecuting me, destroying me. That's the only way I can use those words to describe it. For their sake, this person destroyed me. And the father just kept loving, 
loving unconditionally towards them. And I, it just like it, it was a rebuke to me because I had conditional love. If they would love me back, I would love them. And uh, that's not the way it works. God loved us before we even gave us, gave him any love, you know. Hallelujah. So anyways, yeah. God, if there's any sicknesses in anybody's body right now, let's release the anointing. The anointing's here to break the yoke. The anointing's here to break the yoke of bondage off of them now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus on you. I soak you in the anointing. I release warring angels, ministering angels, and spirits of fire into your home to push back all the works of darkness. I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, wherever that chaos is, let there be the light of Christ Jesus. Let there be light. Thank you, Father. Shine your spirit upon us, God. Shine, put your searchlight upon us. If there's anything in us that's displeasing to you, take it away. Take everything out of my life that is displeasing to you, God, and everything that is pleasing to you, magnify it. Magnify it and bring your name glory, God. God, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of, be, uh, all knowledge of you, the Father of glory, be multiplied into your people. Grace and mercy be multiplied into your house. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yo, it's fun hanging out with you today. <laughs> There's some angels in my house or something. <laughs> A lot of glory. And we go from glory to glory. So just get in the glory and stay there. And then wait for the next wave. Hallelujah. Grab your spiritual surfboard and get on up. <laughs> get on up. That's what they said to John. Come up here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> come up here. I'm going to show you things to come. Hallelujah. Go from glory to glory and see what the Lord wants to do through your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Be blessed. Go, go now. Go, go worship God. Spend some time with God and uh, just see what you can sow. He'll give you seed to the sower. He gives you seed. So he's put those seeds in already in your spirit, man. Just release them out through your gates, through your soul, and through your your body, your mouth. <laughs> or write them down. Write the vision down. Make it plain. God bless your face. It's all grace. <laughs>